World Bridges Studio, <laughs> Ms. Bonnie Stewart. All right, we're recording. So, um, I know there are some urgent lunch matters to attend to, but first, how are things going? Things are going really well. I am mostly calm and pleased, and I think it's either because I've forgotten something extremely important or because things are going well. All right, and it looks like the people from Sandy's session may be entering now. Sandy session is coming in. I think we have everyone here. We'll let you run if you grab the next guest for the studio. I'm thinking Dave and Will are right there. Why don't we... Let's grab them. Yep. And uh, if folks want to go ahead and try to Skype in, feel free to Skype World Bridges, and we'll see how crazy this can get. Uh, gentlemen, Bonnie's on her way to drag you guys here. I suggest the long way. <laughs> Audio's a little hot. Okay, does this uh, sound better? Sure. We're casual here. So, what's your title in this whole thing? Studio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the dude. The dude. You are the conference dude. You asked if it was okay to call me dude today. So I did. It's kind of like out to lunch. You think so? Yeah, no, not kind of. It's not, I'm not allowed to call no, you No, it's that? okay. No, the asking me was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm uh, one of the conference organizers. I'm also the emergency tech support guy. I'm the sound man. Um, I'm also a presenter and um, husband, husband uh, partner, <laughs> and um, I don't know, panelist. All right, uh, we've been joined by the Skypers are starting to call. I just want to see if we can hear them. Uh, Arthus, are you there? Excellent. Um, and I, I missed a couple calls that came in. Um, I only have one extra headset. We'll give it to Will. They probably want to talk to Will. <laughs> yeah. All right, yes. But very boring. -like. Actually, this, these might be easier to use. Those are, those are my actual... Now, how, can you imagine how cables get tangled? I can't imagine. <laughs> very professional operation here, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. You're on with Will Richardson. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fine to me. Is this thing on? Oh, so confusing. I think so. Is this thing on? I don't know how to do these. Put it on. Like this? Yes. Like this? That way. No, no, the other way. <laughs> it's like working with a child. Is this online? And to those who called in and I missed, please feel free to uh, Skype in again. I wasn't fast enough with my left hand. Hey, who did it? You can hold this. Hey. That was brutal. See, that's the kind of treatment I get around here. I sit here, I, I, hard, I work hard, I slave, and what happens? I get my plate taken away from me just at the time I'm here trying to help this boy out with his webcast. It really is like working with children. I'm telling you. <laughs> Did you say something? Oh. And, and we've got Clarence with us also. Hey, hey uh, Clarence. What's going on? Why am I holding this? Because you're about to talk into it. You're going to say hi, Clarence. Oh, we lost Clarence. Arthus, are you still there? All right, well, he may have stepped away. In that case, Dave, why don't you ask Will an insightful question? <laughs> See the look on Will's face right now? Do you, do you wonder why he looks that way? Listen, I had a really interesting conversation during your presentation. His presentation was actually quite good, if, even if I say it. Um, the kids over there, there's a bunch of uh, high, uh, university yeah, kids who are watching. So I went over and said, uh, they're all looking at your presentation. And I said, uh, hey, does he know what he's talking about? And they went, kind of. And I said, so, so what's the problem? They went, simple. He never showed us his MySpace page. Uh, so what do you think of that? So I'm not legitimate, obviously. Well, Do you have a I MySpace page? I, I do, but I don't update it very much. I have a Facebook page uh -huh. that um, I get to maybe about two, three times a week. That's it. So what do you think the difference is then, conceptually, to those students over there, between you having a blog, which you did show, which you do update every couple of days, or hours, seemingly, sometimes, um, and the actual social networking site? So there's my question. What's the difference between a blog and a social networking site in the minds of those six kids who are standing over there? Well, I think that probably the difference is, is that they're just two very different environments. I mean, social networking sites kind of incorporate a lot of the tools that we talk about. And, you know, I, I kind of had this thinking about Classroom 2.0, you know, that Ning site that's mm -hmm. become really popular. And we, we kind of had a conversation early on about why it was that 
a lot of the longtime bloggy type people um, really didn't see that as interesting as much you know as, as other people did and I think it's because we've just we just kind of had these tools as a part of our practice already and so you go to I'm not saying classroom 2.0 isn't a great site it is but if you've got a wiki already you've got a blog you, you know you're doing all these types of things um, I, I think that that's just kind of the way you do it so MySpace is kind of the same way Facebook is kind of the same way I think um, it's a place where a lot of that stuff happens in the same environment and uh, maybe you don't have your own other places out there where you do that stuff. You just do it kind of within that. Does that make sense? So you're all saying that your Internet personality is more distributed than that and doesn't need to be all collected in one place? Just because of that's the way it kind of evolved. That's the way it evolved. Oh, there we go. So this mic isn't working, the one on the headset? No. Oh, well, gee, why do I have it in front of my mouth then? That's a good question. I mean, goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> and Stephen's over there watching this. On the <laughs> <laughs> so right now, just for the, it's is really bizarre. We've got Stephen Downs, uh, who some of you may have heard of, and Cynthia Dunsford, who is a minister of something something, member of something something, who's over there, who is a very well known blogger herself, who are listening to this presentation that this conversation from about fifteen feet away. Yeah, it is kind of surreal. I, I mean, <laughs> the, the speed is going like 10 gillion miles away and coming right back 10 feet away. You know, it's, that's kind of bizarre. So it's actually, I, I think it's a good point in terms of distributed communities because I feel the same way. The idea of me locking myself down to one platform, it's kind of like pert shampoo where you've got like the shampoo and the conditioner all in one bottle. It's not as good a shampoo. It's not as good a conditioner. In order to get it in the same bottle, you can't really have the best of either. You have to sort of dilute them both. And I feel that way about MySpace and Facebook. The photo thing doesn't work as well as Flickr. The blogging doesn't work as well as WordPress. So I have my, my life out there is distributed to the tools that are, work best for me. But it's easier. You know, Facebook and MySpace and, and having it all in one place, I think on many levels, is probably a lot easier. But um, it's just like... I never knew about that shampoo that was with the conditioner. You know, yes. I always had shampoo and a different conditioner. Uh, so, you know, when, that, that's probably why. A lot of things came out in the 1980s that were <laughs> very, very cool. Um, hi, Bonnie Stewart. How are you? Okay. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I have to go and do something. <laughs> so is there a question from the audience? Hello, hello. 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 Can you hear me? I can. Who's that? Um, this is Arthas. Arthas, do you have a question? Where are you, by the way? I'm in Hinesburg, Vermont. Vermont. Yeah. Right. Um, I had a question, actually, um, about how we have all these tools built all over, but whether we should think about integrating them into a single site. Like, I think they've been having like those kind of live stream type things. Ooh. Loud audio. Um, <laughs> this is really hard. Over multitask will Richard's accomplishment. I can't cope. Um, <laughs> oh, now they're all looking under their plates to see who won the door prizes. Um, <laughs> no, I think that that's kind of the same question that we were just talking about with Dave, you know, that. Um, I think for people who are kind of finding these technologies right now, that maybe having them all in one space makes it easier, and I think it's a great thing. Um, uh, the people, you know, who have been dabbling in this stuff for a long time, it's more of a small pieces loosely joined kind of approach, and I think it doesn't matter which way you do it. I think whatever way works for you is fine. I think actually the whole Facebook apps is kind of interesting. The Facebook apps? Yeah. Applications? Yeah. Right. Like the idea right. of providing a platform but not being the sole creators. Right. Well, and the funny thing about Facebook for me is that I actually use it less since they've started building all this stuff. Um, it just has become overwhelming in a lot of ways. So, um, like I said, for... Uh, <laughs> Dave's running around looking at the bottom of plates so he can win the USB drive that he bought for the conference. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Clarence has a has texted in a question. 
What kind of tools do we have? Do we need to measure the effectiveness of networks? What kind of, do you want to answer that? No. <laughs> what kind of tools do we have to measure the effectiveness of networks? Wow. Uh, I guess it depends on what you define effective being when it comes to networks, because I think that networks can probably be effective on a lot of different levels. Um, uh, for me, it's how much I can manage, how much information is coming my way, how much learning I'm doing, you know. Uh, I don't think that there's a standardized assessment for networks, thank goodness. But school teachers or administrators would you use to, what criteria would they be using to measure their education network? For their students or for themselves? Well, for both. I would, I would hope they're the same thing, largely, but you know, if they're going to try some social networking thing, how do they measure its success? Well, they're probably going to have to try to tie it to some type of, of uh, uh, increase in test score. Someone's typing. Yes. Who's that? <laughs> Stop typing. Stop mom typing. <laughs> or if you want to type, just mute your mic in Skype. <laughs> This is cha very chaotic at this moment. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think that uh, there has, there's probably going to have to be some type of way to measure student achievement as they build and as they engage in network learning. But what that looks like, and with Dave screaming in the background, <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> what, what proof do we have about the advantages for kids? Um, well, I don't, you know, uh, I think the proof may not necessarily be in the advantages for kids right now as much as the advantages for learning. I think there's lots of people out there in networks who are learning in really profound and transformative ways. And uh, I kind of work under the, the uh, uh, hypothesis that that can translate to kids, um, although it probably will be a much more natural progression for them. Hopefully it's not transformative. Hopefully it's just kind of the way that they evolve as learners. You know, for us it's just been really different, so therefore it's different, you know, transformative. But I hope it's not that way for kids. I don't know. Interesting question from Jennifer. Has Will's perspective on educators blogging changed in the last year? A year ago he seemed quite strong that some people should not be blogging, has he mellowed over the year to be more permissive to different styles of blogging other than his? <laughs> was I really? <laughs> I was strong that some, some people should not be blogging? Um, I don't, I, I used to go, I used to say, you know, that we should all try blogging, we should all, you know, at least get a sense of what it is to create content and publish, and blogging used to be the primary tool to do that from an ease of use standpoint, but... Look, I, I think if people want to blog, they can. If they don't want to blog, that's fine, too. Um, but they need to participate, I think, in some way. And, and that's what kind of network learning is. It's more of a participatory type of uh, engaged practice that, uh, in some way, I think requires you to produce and to publish. And whether that takes the form of a blog or something else, I don't know. Um, so I don't know. Have I mellowed, Jen? I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. How else have you changed in the last year or two since you started doing what you do? How, what, what, what curve do you see us on? Well, I think I've, I've really actually moved away from classroom practices more into just personal learning. I think that's, that's kind of the biggest change, but um, I don't know. I, I think uh, it's... It's changing so quickly. I mean, even this, what we're doing right now, changes my head a little bit about what's possible, what we should be thinking about, you know, the direction maybe uh, to some extent. It is really difficult to, to talk when Dave's doing the presentation in the background. But you, and you really should be showing, actually, the, the stuff that, that he's showing here because this is the project that they're working with the seventh graders, you know, at PEI. Yeah, why don't you do that instead of listening to me babble on? Go look at the project. Bye. So, of our lucky prize winners today, two of the attendees, the only two attendees from the Université de Sainte Anne in Nova Scotia, these people have come a long way to be with us today, two came, two won. What's up with that? 
is lucky? Absolutely. <laughs> this is Annie Saint Jacques. Yes. And what brought you here today, Annie? Well, I'm the uh, I'm an instructional designer at Université Saint Anne, and I was really interested because I always follow uh, Dave's blog, and I was really interested in meeting people here. It's a great way to network with great people. <laughs> Excellent. We're so glad you came, and you brought your colleague Daniel, who's over there as well. Yes. <laughs> Who also won. Um, now, I apologize. Je ne parle pas le français très bien. But you, you teach in French? Uh, yes, I used to teach French uh, at the university level, and now I'm responsible for the distance ed education programs there. Okay. How do your distance education programs work there? Because I could certainly look to improve my French. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's a really, really new position. So I am just started to... Uh, get things going there. To get so, a sense for it. absolutely, yeah. So is, is the distance program at the university a new program, or is it just new to you? Uh, it's a new program. We have we're really good with video conference, mm -hmm. but this is, the online the stuff online is kind stuff. of, kind yeah. of new to us. No, and it's yeah. it's it's a really interesting world. It's actually one of the things that makes me really excited about education. Is that particularly anywhere here in the Maritimes in Canada? Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of PhD programs. There's not a lot of, of opportunities for education, and particularly for educators, past the master's level. And mm -hmm. finding programs that, that diversify and disperse um, the different pockets of, of expertise and knowledge, it's, it's great. It's a great thing to be involved in. Absolutely. So are you, uh, what are you planning to do with your new data stick? <laughs> I <laughs> uh, probably use it for all kinds of multimedia stuff, exciting stuff. <laughs> well, you can think of us at UPEI every time you use it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Thank very you Annie. Very much. <laughs> Ray, why don't you come have a seat? Yeah, we'll, we'll switch off because, because they're actually from the same university. So <laughs> She said it very well, didn't she, Daniel? Yes. And this is Ray Doiron. Um, or do you say Duran or do no, you say Duran? Duran? From actually UPEI's Faculty of Education. Yes. And uh, you won a data stick? I won a data stick. Are you very and excited? I never win anything, oh. so I wonder should I go out and buy a lottery ticket or something? But you Probably uh, anyway. should. Well, I think you never win anything because Ray was actually trying to get rid of his lunch plate that had the winning P under it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had a feeling. I said, Ray, yes, you don't did. give your plate away. Okay. I actually didn't know. No. It was just. I, I really didn't know, so I'm, I'm awfully glad that I did, and I'm awfully glad that you won. Tell us about what you do here at UPEI. Uh, two areas, primarily. My work is with uh, in early literacy, working with uh, new teachers, helping them to learn the ways and means of uh, getting kids into their literacy. Uh, and secondly, school libraries and the role of the library in all of the stuff we're talking here today, but also in terms of its role connected to the multiple literacies, basically. Excellent. So this would definitely fit in with oh. some of what your, your practice is. Oh, very much. And the research as well. Very closely tied to both. So it's uh, very interesting today. I've seen your name on an interesting research project recently. Yes. Um, can you tell us anything about that? Well, what was, which one was it, though? There are several. Uh, so there are several. The okay. nutrition, no, early literacy one, nutrition. It had no. to do with, I believe, possibly with blogging? Uh, um, or was something online, anyhow? No, yeah. I guess we're no. just probably... Oh, I, I, I'm getting ready for a project okay. on uh, developing a, a, a social network for people who are kids who are interested in, in reading and just finding a space it. for themselves. It's called World Readers. And so I'm just sort of starting on that very small, as suggested here this, today. I have two classes of kids that are going to get me, get me started before we take it public. And then I have several schools around the world that are going to partner with me in Jan after the new year. So it's... Uh, That's so exciting. Yeah. I think, actually, if you don't have plans... A chosen session for this afternoon. What Sharon Peters is going to be talking about is connecting with other classrooms. Yeah, she's done a great deal of that. That's, that's what my what did you attend this morning, Ray? I went to the um, session that um, Dave did on. Um, it became focused around wikis primarily, and that which was, I guess, uh, something I've done a bit of that, but not a lot. And I'm really haven't integrated it enough into my uh, uh, own. Uh, presentation style shall we say mm -hmm. you know I sort of it's time to do that and so I was uh, working on that while I was there with Dave actually cool. so, so you get to do some hands-on oh, I did yes some of the, some of the discussion uh, uh, centered around uh, issues of security with kids mm -hmm. in schools and 
firewalls that districts have put up so kids can't get into social networks at school, some things like that were the focus of our discussions. Excellent. I know that for me, like when I listen to a presentation like Will's, which is brilliant, at the same time I can only change my own literacies so much and so fast. And so when you talk about integrating wikis, it's one of the things that I'm, I'm still getting there as well in terms of I know what they can do. And then it's each new thing that I integrate is a step, and it takes a little while to start to feel like that's a part of my own normal, and then I'm ready for a new step. Well, I, I guess I, I feel very much the same way, and I, I, I think of myself, I'll try to put myself in the situation of being like one of our new learners, right? The, the kids that he was talking about and that we're all reading and discovering, and our own kids, whatever, is that they, they just treat it as a a way of exploring as a way of playing almost and uh, that's what most of us have to unlearn is the sense that it isn't structured and, yeah. and defined it's much more a sense of play and working in yeah. the environment in that way so. okay. no, it, it's, it's fun when you actually start doing it well we have, to, we have to think of learning more as play and as when we were very young children and I think that really helps a lot if you have that attitude and spirit very much. thanks very much Ray yeah. enjoy your data stick by popular demand, uh, the viewing audience has said, we want Sharon, we want Sharon. So here she is. I had to Skype her over there at the other table. Sharon Peters, welcome to the World Bridges studio. Hey, it's so great to be here. And I, I want to thank uh, all those folks out there who have been Twittering all morning. And I was away from my computer for a while. And when I got back, it was hilarious <laughs> to read all the, the Twitters uh, from around the world of those that caught Will and those who saw Stephen Downs in the audience and uh, those who were commenting and teasing. And, uh, and yes, I am wearing lip gloss. I, I send that out to John Pedersen. I, I am indeed wearing lip gloss right now. And um, thinking of you, John, and others. <laughs> and I uh, high-fived uh, Jeff when I met him the other day. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what else. It's to say. cool to have all this this ed tech talk, World Bridges energy in the it's same. Got, room. Yeah, it's got the vibe going. Well, on. our presentations start very soon, don't very they? Very soon. How long do we have? I'm not entirely is it, certain. Is it 1:30 or 1:45? 1:30. What time is it? Yikes! Now? It's 1:11. Uh, okay, um, well, I'm good to go. Are you not good oh, to go? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, I got plenty of time. 19 minutes. Um, Will is going to try to uStream his. Okay. Do you want to try to do the same? Do you have a Ustream account? I don't have a Ustream account. How long does it take to set one up? 60 seconds. Okay. And you have your little have Mac camera. people will have no problem. Oh, yeah, that's true. I could just use If my that's Mac. the case, you should be able to just... Now, I assume you'll be using your computer to... No, I won't be, but I'm not sure I'm going to get internet for ah. my Mac. And that could be the concern. I've got to talk that to Dave, be. the man over there, who's now out there schmoozing and networking like crazy. Um, oh, he's with Stephen Downs right now, for example. And uh, I don't know, maybe Dave can get me set up where I am, because I'm hoping to make mine hands-on as well as the, the presentation, and, and I'll be putting the link for that. Hopefully we'll be doing it live. If not, hopefully we can archive it. Yes, um, that's true. What's your presentation going to be about? Um, it's called uh, da, 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 Personal Displays of Connection, Flattening the Classroom Walls for Meaningful Conversations. And I, I've got a lot of stuff to show that really dovetails well on what uh, Will said this morning showing off my own kids and how they use the internet, some of my own student projects, and uh, what I think are best practices for using blogs, wikis, and uh, other Web 2.0 tools in the classroom. What I'd really like to do as well is give the teachers an opportunity to fool around with Google Docs and look at Google Presentation and maybe a wiki as well. So uh, I, I also look a little bit at some of the, the um, uh, research and theory that has supported these kinds of, of tools, um, particularly online learning environments and collaboration. I would really much rather go to your presentation and do mine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what can I say? Well, thank you. That's very flattering. I know of at least one person who's coming to mine rather than Will's. So, so I'm psyched. <laughs> That's all you need is one person and you can... <laughs> There's at least one yeah. person going to be there. That's right. That's great. Right. We'll have a great conversation, I'm sure. And I'm thinking, to be smart, I should probably start wrapping things up here because so, I need to yep. change a few things. That's it. And, and uh, you've got a zillion uh, wires here that need to be probably fixed up for Will. The Will will probably be on, well, Will's on his own. Okay. Someone uh, else is, is well, streaming for him? for me. Okay. He's you streaming himself. Okay. Nope. Okay. And okay. what we're going to try to do is uh, stream him into my, the webcasting presentation. So okay. let's see what Will's up to. And oh. if you get internet connection, we could do that too. Let's see what okay. Shannon's up to. Okay. Well, we need to bother Dave about that then. Yeah, let's go bother okay. Dave. Okay. It's nice chatting with you, Jeff. Always and, a pleasure. And, and I hope the audience is, did, let's see if we missed any comments here.
Jen wants to go to your class. Aww. <laughs> All right, well, good luck. We'll try and get it you streamed. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Yep. We'll, try. we'll talk to you after the presentation. Yes. Okay, take care. Bye, everyone. All right. Well, I'm thinking maybe we should wrap up because we're going to have to do some fiddling with stuff. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap up the lunch cast. If all goes well, we'll be streaming again in 10 minutes, hopefully no later than 15 minutes, getting ready for the webcasting session. Thanks very much to everyone who has been tuning in and participating in this live coverage of the Living Archives New Media Institute. We will look forward to continuing very soon.